Now, in the film I, Daniel Blake, you see the main characters, Daniel Blake and his friend Kate, lose their benefits after being sanctioned by the benefits office. Sanctioning is a punishment for not looking for work hard enough or not turning up on time for appointments or whatever. Now, Daniel Blake's story is fiction, but those who work in food banks say that sanctioning does force people into charity. I'm going to debate sanctioning shortly with Ken Loach, who made the I, Daniel Blake film. But first, we're going to the town of Accrington to meet some people who've been sanctioned. Filmmaker Nick Blakemore has returned to the Maundy Grange, a charity relief centre he visited in 2014, which tries to help people. Morning, Maundy Grange. I've had a bit of a bad situation with um, a landlord. He's evicted us. It's been an absolute nightmare. We've got him rent arrears with a landlord, and he's just he's just started getting really heavy. I've been evicted. Okay. Needs burn. Oh, yeah. 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 The morning. Yeah. 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 In the local community, so um, need can be defined as not having enough to eat or have, suffering from mental ill health or needing help with a form. Is there any dinner left? I said it's fish and chips with no peas. Fish and chips will do. It's difficult to be optimistic at the moment because we've seen sort of three years of things getting gradually, uh, gradually worse, and I think there's things which we weren't used to like benefit sanctions people being left destitute which are now more commonplace um, and that that's a worry and that doesn't seem to be getting better i can't get into the house to get my stuff so while i while i'm fighting to get my stuff i've got nothing to, to live on you know what i mean and I, all i really want is help with uh, just if i can get a hold of a bed or something nothing wrong with this look all good food yeah Tomatoes. What's wrong with them? Nothing. I've, I've been eating this today. Lovely. Oh, these are in. Oh, the. I'm serious with this in there. I'm one of the lucky ones. People feel sorry for, sorry for me. This shouldn't do. You know, I'm, I'm already on the streets. You know what I mean? I, I'm not scared anymore. You know, I'm not being scared. I've, I've got no debts. I don't owe, I, I don't owe anybody, anybody any money. There's nobody knocking on my door. John isn't receiving any benefits. When he lost his job four years ago, he says he gave up on the system after being sanctioned. I've worked all my life now, this thing to do, do, do all that job search, do yeah. six hours a day, volunteer work, I do, five days a week, for £40 a week. Yeah. I'm not doing it. I've got bills to pay. It's wrong. Yeah. You, know, you know, that's not living. Yeah. It's barbaric. They should be in heads rolling for that one. When you say you worked all your life, what, what were you doing? And well, my first I worked in a mill for six years, and then I worked in a foundry for a couple of years. I worked in another foundry yeah. in Accrington, another foundry in Burnley. They've all closed down now. When I was here last, I met John Crabtree. He'd just been sanctioned. The sanctions are about basically saying you're not yeah. making enough of an effort to look for work. So, you know, is that not fair? Is it that fair? I turned around then and said, well, like I'm 61 now, I'm in Burnley. I said, there's no job to somebody at my age. I said, young people are showing. So I said, how can you sit there, a young person, 25 years old, and tell me about work? You haven't even... You haven't done the experience I have had, so I said, no, make me laugh. Hello, John. How's it going? I tracked John down to his new place in Accrington. He's now on another sanction. He says because he didn't fill a form in correctly. It's been a while since uh, I last saw you, so I just wanted yeah. to see how you're doing. Yeah. Is this your new place? Yeah. Come in, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. Hello. Hello. Then you sit down. She likes what she's playing. Yeah. This is where I've been living for about three years. Because last time I spoke to you, you'd, uh, you'd been sanctioned. Uh, you said you'd been sort of struggling to make ends meet and you. And mm -hmm. shoplifting. Um, I spoke to you the other day, you said you, you, you've been in prison? Yeah, 
Yeah. Walk of that. I went driving because I was stuck for a month in and uh, I got a coil to have it, so I got 20 months. 20 months? Yeah. Uh, for doing what? I was just a driver. Right. Trying to spare it to the steel. I'll What happened? There was a leak up in the bathroom and I went in it, the sink ran over and the pool was in it, ran over and that's what it did. And the ceiling came down. And it's ripped off from what it's done by then. Well, it's better than the place you're in. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of nice work, isn't it? I mean, that's not saying much, John. I know. Can I just ask you, when you think back, because you, you worked all your life. That's right. Yeah, yeah I worked from being 15, 16. I was born on a farm and... You know, things should be easy now, but not worse, but anyway, it'll get better, won't it? I hope. Look, you've got buns now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh. So what, Jono, are these your supplies? Uh, yeah. I got this milk earlier on. So I had some cake, some buns, some chocolate. Cho cho I'm a chocoholic. Chocolate's my favourite drug, then weed. I don't want to be on the streets. I never, I hate it. I hate it with a passion. Sometimes I'll wake up and think, oh shit, stop. Oh. I woke up. Yeah, it's a nightmare. Sometimes I have nice dreams and I wake up and I think, oh, that, oh shit, the realisation hits me. Yeah. Oh shit. How do you find a, a place to sleep at night? What do you look for? Uh, like a bit, a bit of shelter. There's a few places I go to. There's no school as well. It's, it's got like a bit of light. Yeah. That, that's quite nice. As long as you've got a couple of sleeping bags, something like that, but well, you're nice and dry, it's a lot better than sleeping in, say, Tesco car park yeah. or something. It's, it's still very drafty. You might still be dry there, but you're in a personal, a public place. Well, you get over here, out of the way. Yeah. You know you have to get up in the morning by the time they open up and things like that, so you just do what you do. Yeah. You, you find a place that's sheltered like this, and yeah. that's it. Yeah. Happy days. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Back in 2014, Zach was struggling to make ends meet. Well, there's still sanction me and I was meant to be paid today. Right, and you've not been? No. What's going wrong? Well, I don't, I don't know, that, that's the thing. It does, some, like, jobs, they're only taking on, like, certain, like, qualified people, things like that. I, I don't have no qualifications. Now he's back in work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, what happened after you were sanctioned then? Well, they basically messed around with me housing benefit. They still carried on up to like not so long ago, messing around with me housing benefit yeah. uh, and got me like, over a thousand pound of debt with my landlady. Uh, the missing uh, women job seekers and all that lot and obviously that, that's what that's what made me want to get a job really so then obviously I don't, don't have to oh depend on them yeah. all we have is like an emergency accommodation um, which is literally just on one of our um, cities it's easy to agree the principle that people who can work should work. Um, I think what worries us is the number of people who can't work, who are being penalised um, for not being able to work. The way things are going, I think there's a big gap sometimes in people's awareness of what's going on, and maybe some people feel that we're moving out a bit out of recession, things are maybe getting a bit better, and there's maybe a lack of willingness to really look at what's happening to people who don't have, who don't have that feeling that things are getting better, who have the feeling that things are getting considerably worse. Ah, the bacon, man.
to be alright, I did the bin bag. What's inside? Uh, well, yeah, I do, eat, I do eat a lot of food from the skip, so I've got to admit, I, I do find a lot of chocolate biscuits sometimes, or lots of cake. Oh. Gina, what are you looking for? Food! To oh, eat! Oh, Oh, there you go. Food to eat! You brought some oh, milk? Yeah. Oh, fucking lovely. Come on a couple of days, am I? Yeah, take it. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I meant you. I don't I know you can't. Can. No, yeah. Take it, man. Oh, what? Look, bread, pigeons, 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 pigeons. No, no. Well, there's soup kitchens, things like that. There's not enough to cater for all week, dinner and tea type thing. So when you're hungry at tea time, well, you do the skips. Hey, you away. What? Gina, can you explain how often we go hungry? Oh, I'm milk. Every day I'm hungry. <laughs> Every day I'm hungry. Why? Um, because... I'm, I'm, I'm almost on the streets at the moment. And I don't claim any benefits, I'm not getting any benefits. Right, is this being used or not? Oh yeah, I know. Right, come on, I've got this bed in as well, we'll sit down. <laughs> Nick Blakemore in Accrington meeting and re-meeting people who've been facing benefit sanctions. Well, we did ask the Department for Work and Pensions for an interview, but they weren't able uh, to offer anyone. They did say, however, that sanctions are only used as a last resort. I'm, I'm, I am, however, joined by Matthew Oakley, who was commissioned by the government to write an independent review into the impact of sanctions on job seekers' allowance claimants. And in Bristol, we have the director, film director Ken Loach, whose award-winning film, I, Daniel Blake, did tell the story of people struggling well, with the bureaucracy of the welfare system. A very good evening uh, to you both. Um, Matthew, I'd like to just start with you, because for, for some sort of facts. You did a review. What did you... You found it was sort of basically working. Is that right, the, the sanction system? Essentially so. I mean, I think what we need to take on board here is the kind of the wider con context, that this is a system that... Uh, system of sanction that only applies to a relatively small number of people. Um, the vast majority of people on benefits aren't sanctioned, they're not facing the sanction system. So the people you're seeing in that film we've, ju we've just seen are the very, very hardest end of, of what we're talking about here. Secondly, there's a huge amount of international evidence that shows that conditionality or requirements placed on people who are, who are on benefits, um, backed up by financial sanctions, for, uh, penalties for not doing what they should be in terms of looking for work is effective in getting people back to work more quickly. And thirdly, that this is a system that's supported by both the vast majority of the public, but also benefit claimants themselves. And that was one of the surprising things from my review. We spoke to a lot of benefit claimants, to charities who support benefit claimants, and even people who've been sanctioned. And they supported the principle behind the system. What's your reaction as you watch that film? I mean, do you think those people should have been sanctioned? Or do you think they're just, if you like, the cost of a sanctioning system that you're going to have some people who shouldn't be sanctioned who are sanctioned because it i mean it looked like some of them were going to find it quite difficult to get a job i think probably weren't they absolutely i mean i think this is probably not for me a question of whether they should or should not have been sanctioned but the fact they've been sanctioned means that they've not been seeking work or they've turned down a job opportunity that was available to them what my review said was that in certain situations where people are obviously vulnerable um we're talking homelessness here that should act as a signal for people to step in and provide more support for those people so they can get themselves out of that situation. Did, did you see I, Daniel Blake, the movie? I've not seen it. You've not seen it. Ken Loach, do you recognise th this basic finding that some conditionality in a system that says you've got some responsibilities and you're punished if you don't, you, you know, if you don't meet them, basic responsibility, do you accept any of that at all in a benefit system? Um, well, I, I think w what's clear is that um, Sanctions are a cruel and vindictive way of treating vulnerable people. Um, they, uh, people are set up to fail. Um, the, the, the system is there in order to trap them. Um, when they go to a job centre, they're not shown the jobs that are available. The job coaches aren't allowed to show them what jobs are available. And people are in fear. Um, and a lot of people are, are, are sanctioned because of the work capability assessment. Um, and that again, I mean, we, we heard stories of a, a, a man who had a heart attack in the course of the assessment. He had to go to hospital. He was sanctioned because he couldn't complete the assessment. Um, th there are a kind of absurd stories of people sanctioned for being a few moments late. Um, and of course, we know job centre staff, and I don't know if Matthew Oakley got this in his report, but job centre staff are given targets. Uh, they call them uh, expectations. 
And if they don't uh, sanction a certain number of people per week, then they themselves get into trouble. Let, let's the, just the, pick the up DWP that specific. Let me put told us this all the time. Let and, me put and that so specific many people to Matthew. The DWP because of that work, because of that terrible atmosphere they have to work in. Matthew, is that is that actually correct that they have to sanction a certain number of people? Well, I'm telling you, it is but correct. They told let, us. Let me just turn that around the other way. Wouldn't you be more concerned if we didn't know how many people, peop, uh, how many people a particular job centre um, office was were sanctioning that? Actually, but hang on, there, I, there, I want them to target that we, didn't, that we didn't that we didn't know they were sanctioning, say, 30 percent of people. Is it not right that actually in terms of standard management practice, we understand how many people, what proportion of people on benefits each office is sanctioning? But do we, do, are they targeted? Are they, the are they forced? To, are they told you should be sanctioning this number? That's that's not my experience. We spoke to a number of uh, job centre staff uh, in the course of the review. Right. Very, very much, actually. What, what we found was a lo the large proportion of those, of those staff actually supported the system. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll hold that factual question. Ken Loach, I'm interested in what, you know, you're stuck in the dilemma of saying there's no conditionality at all, or there are some kind of sanctions. And I, I mean, in a way, you're, in a sound like you're arguing there should be no sanctions at all. Uh, or no, is I, that, I'm, I'm saying that no, nobody supports cheating. Um, and nobody supports tax cheats, but they don't seem to get the same coverage. Um, I mean, I think, it, yes, of course, uh, the, the sh people should not cheat and there should be a way of dealing with that. But when you, when you stop people's money, you force them into the direst poverty. They have nothing. They're driven onto the streets, they're, they're made homeless, yeah. they're driven to food banks. And just think, last year, out of one group of food banks, 1,100,000 food, bank, food bags were given. One million one hundred thousand. Half a million of those went to families where there were children. Children would not eat unless people put tins into a charity bag. Now don't you think that's absolutely disgusting? And we take that now, we accept that as, uh, that's part of our society now. Mm. And, and that's the system that uh, Matthew Oakley appears to be defending. I mean what I, what I would say, this is a, a system that certainly the vast majority of the public actually support that claimants that we've spoken oh, to the claimants support, it's, it's claimants it's support the system that's system. not to say there you are some vulnerable people who well, need let, more help let me put to you that system let me put you you know, there are quite a lot of people who are we have a binary system you're sort of either capable to work and have to go and look for it or you're not but there are a lot of people who are kind of on the margins and they're going to find working quite difficult they have ragged lives or the the responsibilities are actually just a little bit onerous for where they are or they have low level mental health difficulties and are we applying sanctions to those people because it that i think most people who believe in sanctions will say we do not want sanctions applied to people who are not going to be capable of holding down a job uh, I, I think, and i think I the think, point the point uh, here well, Matthew, is we need, we need to, point here, if I may say, we, I we, we need to understand here sorry, that, Ma matthew and then ken go on matthew we need to understand what a sanction is here this is not people being sanctioned for not being in work being unemployed or out of work is not the cause of a sanction. It is not doing what you've agreed to do. And remember, let's, pe let's remember that people are agreeing to do these things. It's seeking work, it's taking steps towards work. In your case of a mental health condition, it might be actually you're taking steps to you know, prepare yourself for work, to take on some kind of activity which improves, Im improves your health condition. This isn't people being sanctioned for not being at work, it's for not taking the steps towards work right. they've agreed. Ken Lowe, should you have the last word? Um, well, people are sanctioned when they're in work. Um, a woman was sanctioned for going on leave when she was on a zero-hours contract. She was sanctioned for that. Um, but we're, we're, we're missing the point. This is an extraordinarily cruel way to deal with the poorest and most vulnerable people. And if all the people who, who did every, fulfilled every dot and com of what they would require, there would still be 1.6 over a million people unemployed. There'd still be 5 million people underemployed. It's the system that creates the poverty and we're punishing the poorest and blaming them for their poverty, blaming the unemployed Ken, for the unemployment. Ken Loach. And that's, that's really false and Matthew should accept that. Ken Loach, Matthew, thank you both very much. Indeed.